Let us pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O Jesus, through the immaculate heart of Mary, I offer you my prayers, works, joys and sufferings on this day for all the intentions of your sacred heart in union with the holy sacrifice of the mass throughout the world in reparation for my sins for the intentions of all my relatives and friends and in particular for the intentions of the Holy Father. Amen. Let us pray for the intentions of the Holy Father for the month of June, for migrants fleeing their homes. We pray that migrants fleeing from war or hunger, forced to undertake journeys full of danger and violence, find welcome and new opportunities in the countries that receive them. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. My dear friends, the Word of God welcomes us this morning. And as we begin this day with the Lord, we ask Him to help us in all our endures. As we begin this day in His presence, we ask Him to bless us so that every step, every activity may radiate His presence, His joy and His love to the world. And therefore we see that sometimes in life we do not acknowledge or we do not thank the Lord sufficiently for all the graces that we have received. If you take a look at our lives, we see that we may have received plenty of graces, but we very rarely thank the Lord for them. And therefore, it would be adequate for us to begin today's day by thanking the Lord, thanking Him for all the little things, for all the graces that He has given in our lives. These things, which may seem little, go a long way in His plan for us. Everything that happens, happens because He wills it and because He has it planned in our lives. And therefore, we begin by thanking the Lord for the gift of life. Lord, we thank you for the various talents, abilities that you have given us. We thank you for making us different, unique. Lord, we also thank you for the gift of this day. A day that will help us to make a difference, not only in our lives, but also in the lives of others. A day which may help us to complete something that was left incomplete or to do something in a different manner. Lord, we also want to thank you for the gift of our family members, friends, relatives, near and dear ones, and all those who play a very important role in our lives. All these individuals have indeed helped us in various ways. They have molded us and made us who we are. And therefore, Lord, we ask you that you shower your abundant blessings on them and help them in all their endeavors. 
Lord, we also thank you for all the opportunities that you have given us. Opportunities to make a difference in the lives of others or opportunities in order to showcase your gifts and thus help for the common good. Lord, we also thank you for the experiences that you have given us. There may be many experiences which are very happy, joyful experiences which we always want to treasure. But there also may be those experiences which may have been tough, difficult. Nonetheless, these have been learning experiences because these experiences have helped us learn a lot in life. And therefore, Lord, we thank you for giving us these experiences, for helping us become stronger individuals. And Lord, as we offer you this day, we ask you that you may give us all the graces that are necessary so that we may understand your plan in our lives and that we may be able to put into practice all the teachings, all the values that you have taught us. My dear friends, let us now spend a few moments and reflect and meditate on Psalm 57. As usual, we shall have a general overview of the psalm and then we shall go into the details of it. Now we see that Psalm 57 is a psalm of lament that is attributed to David and it is believed to have been written during a time when David was fleeing from King Saul and David was seeking refuge in a cave. And in this way, we can say that the psalm can be somehow be divided into three main sections. The first section basically being a plea for mercy and protection. That is something that we find in verses 1 to 3. Then in verses 4 to 6, we have a declaration of trust in God. And finally, in verses 7 to 11, we see a song of praise and confidence in God's deliverance. And therefore, overall, when we take a look at this psalm, we see that Psalm 57 will reflect David's deep trust in God's protection and deliverance, especially during time of great adversity. Now, this psalm showcases David's plea for mercy, his declaration of trust in God's faithfulness and his resolute praise and confidence in God's deliverance. Now, it also serves as a reminder of the importance of seeking refuge in God during times of trouble and also praising Him for His steadfast love and faithfulness. In our lives too, we may find ourselves in these difficult moments. And it is here that we can take refuge, we can have comfort that David gives us an example of how we are to conduct ourselves during those moments, how we are to go about praising the Lord, trusting Him, keeping our faith and trust in Him, being confident that the Lord will help us as He never abandons us. And now let's take a look at the psalm in details. Now the first section of the psalm, that is verses 1 to 3, begins by David seeking God's mercy and protection. So in verses 1 to 2, he appeals to God to be gracious and to take refuge in him. It is here that David describes his situation as being in the midst of fierce enemies whose teeth are like spears and arrows ready to devour him. And despite the danger surrounding him, we see that David expresses his trust in God and seeks his help. As we move on to the second section of the psalm, we see that here David declares his trust in God's faithfulness. In verses 3 to 4, he affirms his confidence that indeed God will send his help from heaven and save him from his enemies. Now, David also acknowledges that God will fulfill his promise for him and send forth his steadfast love and faithfulness. 
In verse 5, David expresses his desire to exalt God above the heavens and to glorify him among the nations. In verse 6, we see that David will describe the danger he faces and the nets and the traps that have been laid for him. He notes that his enemies have prepared a pit for him, but they themselves will fall into it. So much trust he has in the protective power of the Lord. And it is this confidence that David has in God's deliverance that leads him to a place of assurance and courage. And as we move to the third section of the psalm, we see that David offers a song of praise and he expresses confidence in God's deliverance. In verses 7 to 9, he sings praises to God, declaring that his heart is steadfast and confidence in the midst of his troubles. It is here we see that David affirms that he will sing and make music to praise God even in the face of adversity and difficulties. And finally, in verses 10 to 11, David concludes the psalm with a declaration of confidence and trust in God's goodness and faithfulness. He praises God for his love and faithfulness that reach up to heaven. And therefore, he affirms that his belief in God is strong, that he believes in the glory of God, and ultimately that he will receive protection and he will be able to escape from his enemies. As we know that when troubles come, challenges come, those are like the testing moments in our lives. Are we able to remain steadfast? Are we able to have faith and trust in the Lord? That is a question we need to answer. And therefore, as we reflect on this psalm, let us make our faith and trust in the Lord ever more stronger. Let us surrender ourselves to him and ask him to be with us, to guide us at every step of the way, so that whatever we may do, it may be in accordance for his plan that he has for us. My dear friends, as we have reflected on the psalm, let us now close our eyes at this morning hour and let us thank the Lord. Let us praise the Lord. Let us glorify the Lord. Loving Father, you have given us this time in the morning. You have been gracious to us. You have given us your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who has cleansed us from our sins. He has taken away all our sins and he has given us new life. Lord, as you have given us the Holy Spirit, we ask you, Lord, to bless us and to protect us. And therefore, Lord, for all the blessings that you have given us, all the graces that you have bestowed on us, we thank you, we praise you, and we glorify you. You have protected us all through the night, and you have given us the gift of this day. You have given us good health of mind and body. And therefore, Lord, at this morning hour, we thank you and we praise you. For your great love and mercy, O Lord, we praise you, we thank you, we glorify you. You are a merciful God. You are always there to watch over us at every step of the way. And therefore, Lord, we ask you that whatever actions we may do today, whatever steps we may take, be with us, guide us all along the way, so that whatever we may do, it may be according to your will, according to your plan, and ultimately that you may lead us to fulfill your mission. And therefore, as we reflect and meditate on the psalm, let us now spend a few moments in silence, and let us take a look at what touched us as we read the psalm. There may be a sentence or there may be a phrase. Let us remain with it, asking the Lord to give us the grace so that we too may be able to become like Him, to become a light to the world and therefore spread 
his message of love and peace. Pray to Saint Michael the Archangel for protection. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of of the heavenly hosts by the power of God thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Act of Adoration O Sacrament Most Holy O Sacrament Divine all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Saint Gertrude pray for souls in purgatory. Eternal Father, I offer thee the most precious blood of thy divine Son, Jesus, in union with the masses said throughout the world today for all the holy souls in purgatory, for sinners everywhere, for sinners in the universal church, those in my own home and within my family. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God Rest in peace. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen.